But this time I went to the Holy Land and we went to the, the Mount Transfiguration. We had to, we went by bus to a particular spot, then we have to get off the bus and they got, we got into little minivans uh, that took us up this mountain. And it took us about, I think, about 10 minutes to get up in the bus. It's quite a steep mountain as well. And there on that mountain is a beautiful church um, built to remember the Mount of Transfiguration where this gospel took place. But what was interesting is that whilst we went on bus to get to the top, it would have taken a few hours uh, to climb that mountain. And our Lord took with him Peter, James and John. They went up the mountain and there on the mountain he was transfigured. This event was so important for his disciples because once they go down the mountain they will be heading to Jerusalem where our Lord will undergo great suffering and die on the cross for all of us. But that moment of suffering for him on the cross which certainly caused great confusion to his disciples. How can the Messiah, the promised one, come from heaven to save us and die this cruel suffering death? And so this moment of transfiguration, this event that took place on the mountain, gave Peter, James and John a glimpse of Jesus' glory. So when they are watching him suffer, crucified, and die on the cross, they will remember the glimpse of that glory that was shown to them on the Mount of Transfiguration. So two things for us to learn from today's celebration, take away from this feast, the first is that all of us have suffering in our life. And you might think this is the greatest suffering we're going through, but perhaps, it's, perhaps it is and perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's something else somewhere else waiting for us. Or perhaps we have been through the great suffering already. But nonetheless, all of us will have to meet our Calvary some the journey is tough and painful and plenty of trials but know that the Lord who took the Apostles to Calvary already gave them a glimpse of his glory to remind them at that precise moment when the suffering was so intense that he is the Lord of life because they saw his glory and so for us when we encounter the suffering in our life let us remember that the Lord of life has showed us has proved to us at some moment in our life that he is the Lord of life he is the one who has the heavenly glory he is the one who comes to give us the fullness of life that we have already experienced his presence in our life so now that we are going through this suffering we look back at the time when we encountered his presence in our life and that encounter is for us to enable us to go through our suffering in these difficult times the second thing is that this event was so important for the disciples to glimpse Jesus' glory. But interestingly, our Lord doesn't take all the twelve up the mountain. He only chooses three, Peter, James and John. An event that is going to affect all the disciples should they have all not climbed that mountain to experience, to witness his glory have a glimpse of that glory 
and it doesn't happen for some reason. We don't know why. But all we do know is that Peter, in today's second reading, is speaking about it. He says, Take it as a lamp for lighting as a way through the dark until the dawn comes and the morning star raises in your minds. So they, those three, wear that lamp. The lamp, a light, leading the other disciples through those dark times till they encounter the dawn. So perhaps some of us we have not found this moment of grace as yet. We have not encountered Christ. But know that God is calling those who have experienced his presence to be that light shining in the darkness for those who find themselves in these moments of darkness. Be their light, help them through this darkness so they too may come to experience the dawn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.